I graduated from high school in 63 uh, and really knew nothing about golf at all. Uh, uh, I was a basketball player and that's where my interest was. I did some other sports things too, but basketball was my great love and that's where I spent my time and my energy. You know, I was born and raised in, in a little farming community in southern Utah. Uh, about the only notable thing about Circleville, Utah, is Butch Cassidy was raised there. I remember him always competing uh, at a higher level. And, you know, when the senior uh, uh, tournament started, he dominated that for quite a long time. And, you know, Al could play, and he was a great putter, and he could drive the golf ball, and he had great iron play. So he was good at everything. He's, he's, he's just a fierce competitor. Alan is a, an intense competitor. The interesting thing about him being a competitor is that he makes you feel like you're his friend. Meanwhile, he just beats the snot out of you. <laughs> That's a, I don't know what else you can say about that. He's a fierce competitor. I, I remember when I first started playing at 50 years old and I was, you know, he was in his mid-60s, I guess, and and I'll tell you what, you didn't want to compete against him. I mean, you wanted to, but he, he did not, uh, he, he wanted to beat the crap out of you. In the mission field, I had a missionary companion uh, from Las Vegas, and he was a golfer. And on Monday mornings on Diversion Day, he would drag me out of bed early in the morning. He'd take me to the driving range. I think we were in Wenatchee, Washington. And I would sit on the bench and try to sleep while he pounded balls out there on the driving range. And I remember thinking at the time, wow, that's the stupidest game I've ever seen. One weekend, I was visiting my brother-in-law and my sister who were living in Richfield, Utah. And my brother-in-law, Jerry, and I had always been really competitive with each other. He was a high school basketball coach and a college basketball player. And he was coaching at Millard High when I was playing college, or high school basketball, but he invited me on a Saturday morning to go out to the new golf course that had been, just been built in Richfield to play golf. And I, he said, do you want to play golf? And I said, well, not particularly. I don't know anything about the game. I don't own any golf clubs. And he said, well, your sister's got a set of clubs out in the garage. Let's go out and play. And that was my first real introduction to golf. Uh, he took me out to Richfield Muni and he showed me a little bit about how to hold the golf club and we proceeded to play nine holes of golf. And I'll really never forget it. I look back on it to this day and I remember distinctly we'd played two holes and I was playing the fifth hole or the third hole. It was a par five, which I knew nothing about at the time. But I remember distinctly hitting a second shot, I believe it was, or a third shot towards the green. And I remember seeing that ball fly up in the air and it was traveling towards the green. And immediately I was hooked. Probably my favorite memory was in match play at uh, Wing Point a few years ago. And I'd played good on the front nine. I think I was uh, ahead of him two or three uh, going into the back nine. And then uh, he started to be my friend. And uh, before I knew it, he uh, had a birdie and I was one up. The next hole we had eagle putts of the same length. I missed my eagle putt, he made his. Then he birdied the next hole and then he birdied the next hole and the match was over. So I definitely remember him coming on strong at the end of that match. We were partners at, uh, in the shootout at Victory Ranch and uh, we won. <laughs> we won. This love affair I have with golf has been a 40-year deal. And so I played golf as much as I possibly could going to school and trying to raise a family. Uh, but a lot of my decision to go to Arizona State to work on a PhD was golf related. I was pretty well aware that per square mile there's probably more golf courses down there than about anywhere in the country. I played some golf with John Mehmet and I, I remember how much I respected him and his game. Uh, 
he, he was such a ball striker and I would just marvel uh, when we'd be on the driving range, for example, hitting balls or warming up and getting ready for a round of golf. <clears throat> I would marvel at the sound of the ball coming off his club versus mine. Uh, and kind of throughout my golf career, I've had individuals like that, that that inspired me and motivated me to play better. But I, I remember at the age of 56, uh, I decided to enter the UGA Senior Amateur. Uh, it was being held at Rose Park. And I thought, you know, it's time, Al, for you to tee it up with the best players and see how your game measures up. Uh, I'd been, I'd, my game had improved quite substantially. I've always been pretty good at getting the ball in the hole. Uh, I think basketball helped me with that, that kind of activity. Had, you know, good hand and eye coordination, et cetera. But I really hadn't played competitive golf at that level and so I entered the tournament at, down there and as luck would have it I get down there the first day and guess who my pairing is I, I, I go to the tee the first day and find out that I'm playing golf that day with two legends in the game of golf uh, I was playing with Arlen Peacock and Vaughn Barker and you know and, and I was I was scared to death you know, it's my first outing with good players. Now, granted, these guys were older. Uh, their careers were wrapping up uh, for sure. But, you know, I had, I had watched those two guys play golf. I watched Arlen Peacock win the State Am. I watched Arlen Peacock play Nicholas and Palmer at the Salt Lake Country Club. Uh, and I just admired those two guys and what they'd been able to achieve in the game of golf. And so we went out to play that day and I mean to tell you those two guys treated me with such respect and such courtesy. So I had a reasonably good day the first day of that tournament and the second day I end up in the second to last pairing. Uh, and I ended up being paired the second day with a couple of guys that I have, uh, you know, later on in my golf exploits have become really good friends with, John Taylor and Richard Cropper. And we went out to play the second day. I had no aspirations whatsoever of winning the tournament. Uh, it was just, again, my experiment in, in golf. And as luck would have it, I ended up winning the senior amateur that year, my first experience out. I was so impressed with the way that tournament was handled. I was so impressed by the UGA. There was a different atmosphere. I spent time talking with Joe Watts and I knew a couple of board members uh, that were on the board, uh, like Mike Dimitrik and Mike Jorgensen. And I began talking to them and developed a real interest in getting myself appointed to the UGA uh, in some, some fashion. Senior golf has blossomed in the last 10 years and a lot of that is because of Alan Simpkins, the decisions he, he helped make and uh, programs that he helped start for the senior program. When I entered the match play tournament, and I don't remember how many match play tournaments I'd played prior to this, but it was held in, in Bountiful at Lakeside and uh, anyway, I ended up surviving in that tournament to the final round. And lo and behold, I find out in the final round that I'm going to play John Mehmet. Uh, and I was, I was elated on the one hand because I had such respect for this guy and John had a great golf career and I knew he would played on the Utah-Arizona shootout. Uh, as a regular player and so on but anyway so I ended up playing John in the finals and lo and behold I end up beating John Mehmet he was my hero he was the consummate ball striker uh, and I caught him on a bad day and uh, closed him out on the 16th hole. Al 
you know, he just he just taught me more. He taught me more about the the, the gentleman side of golf than him and Joe Watts probably more than anybody I've ever been around. Not long after I was on the board, and I don't know as I'd even attended a board meeting yet, et cetera, I was, I was fortunate enough to be given, being given a, an award at Weber State. And uh, the day the award was given after, you know, the festivities, et cetera, they called me up to say a few words, et cetera. And when I got up at the podium and I looked out across the audience, guess who was in the audience? Arlen Peacock and Joe Watts. And I looked out there and I said to myself, wow, I, I, did, I can't imagine those guys even knew that this event was happening. But that's, that's what people in this game are like. I don't know if sometimes people think how positive of an influence they are on others. And for me, you know, Alan will always have a special place with me because, you know, I've looked up to him for so long. Congratulations, and uh, still wondering how he got that white Susie. I still, uh, I ask her, I put my fingers up and say, how many? <laughs> Are you blind? He, he got him a good wife. He's got a good wife, Alan. Congratulations, Al. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. When I think of Alan, the best thing I can tell you about Alan is Susan. His wife is awesome, and he's awesome. They do wonderful things for golf in Utah. Al is, is not just a good friend, but he, he knows golf. I'm blown away, quite honestly, by the recognition. I, I mean, it came out of the clear blue. I had no inkling whatsoever that this might even be a possibility. I'm honored, I'm, I'm really honored that the UGA uh, and the PGA would recognize me in this way. I feel, I really feel undeserving in many ways. I enjoyed my days in the UGA tremendously and of course I got to know lots of people that play this game including professionals as well as amateurs during that time learned a lot more about the game and have really developed an interest in the rules of golf through that experience as well. On behalf of the Utah Golf Association I'd like to congratulate Alan Simpkins on being named the 2015 Utah Senior Open honoree. Thank you for your many years of service and for the impact that you've had on amateur golf in Utah.